So when we are talking about input and output, uh, we always talk about a user sitting at the keyboard starting typing stuff. And the information that the user is actually typing goes right into your input commands, whatever you have, scan if I don't get character, whatever you are, whatever you are getting, uh, uh, whatever you plan to get, the, you, you and tell the user what to enter, user sees what's going on, and the information is entered, okay? Um, uh, we have few, uh, we had few things that we, uh, we went through and we uh, explained how it works. I'm just going to use it here and uh, uh, do a little entry and then we're going to go through files and see how we can actually <clears throat> get information instead of users interactively, but as a batch process from data that is already written in a file. So we don't have to always ask user enter this and that and so on and so forth. We just create a manual and give it to the user. I'm going to say create a file with this format and it has to be this and that, separated by these, so you explain exactly how to create that file. They sit on a good time, then they put all the data in a file, and when they run our program, our program simply opens the file, reads the information off the file, does the processing, voila, and it's done. Are we okay? So, How does a file work? You already know that because you're already getting stuff from a keyboard, okay? Essentially, the information that you're getting from a keyboard, as we talked about, it's buffered. What does it mean? It means the information doesn't actually get to your command. It gets fired into your command when the user hits the enter key, right? So if user keeps entering stuff on the keyboard, nothing happens. It, this is the standard way of entering it, okay? So you write a scanf over there, you say get an integer, user keeps hitting the, the keyboard. Nothing happens until the user actually hits the enter key and the information goes to the, right? So Essentially, passing the information to the, any input command is a series of bytes. So the input commands that you have, the scanf, reads the bytes one by one and it starts interpreting it how you, how you asked it to do so. If you say it's an integer, it starts getting the digits, put them together, convert it to an integer, pass it through whatever variable you want. If you say it's a license plate of a number, then it's not a digit anymore, so it gets it character by character, hopefully put it in a string that everybody knows it's, a, it's an alternate array of characters, and then so on and so forth. So if I ask you to, say, write a program that uh, receives the information like this, it gets the name of the student, gets the number of subjects the uh, student has taken, and gets the grade point average of the student, and then print them out. What you do? You first you prompt, right? So, so your prompting is tell to the user how to enter the information. So I'm gonna say we're gonna print print it like this. So uh, I'm gonna say printf, please enter the name, number of subjects, number of subjects taken and the grade, the GPA, comma separated, comma separated, okay? Something like that. And I'm gonna go to new line, comma separated, go to new line, and put a kind of a column so they know where they're entering. And now I want to get the information. So what do I have over here? I have the name, so character name, I don't know how long is the name. I'll imagine it's not going to be more than 60 characters. So I'll put over here 61. That's for 60 characters, right? So that's the string. I need to know how many subjects does the, the user has taken. 
the, the student is taking, so I'm going to say integer number of subjects. And finally, I want to know what's the GPA, so I'm going to write double GPA. So these are the stuff that I want to get from the user. All right. So user is entering the information like this for me. So what user is going to enter is going to be something like this. Fred. So that's the column that user is going to see. And then it's going to say Fred Soleil. And it's going to put comma. Then it's going to say three subjects. And uh, uh, grade point average was 2.8. And then hits the enter. All right? That's what the user is going to get. Now, to get the information like this and put it in Scanf, we need to know certain rules and regulations of entering stuff. So, with Scanf, we said if we put percent %s, what's going to be read? So, the information that is being entered is this. So, when I put percent %s, and name, what's going to be read off that line? Just Fred, and then it stops at space because that's the nature of percent %s. Percent %s gets the information until it hits a, a, a white space character, right? But then we said, instead of doing that, you can actually have a custom delimiter over there. What, how do we write a custom delimiter? I have to go up to comma, right? So what do I do? I'm going to actually use regular expressions for this. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, up to and not including comma. That, so this stands for S. The part that you see over there as uh, highlighted as blue, that is percent S. That replaces percent, that replaces S, which means you are reading a string, but the delimiter is a comma which if I enter those information, so let me just try to uh, show it to you. So in here, I'm going to write it step by step. So I'm going to say printf name, and in here I'm going to say percent %s. For printing, it doesn't matter. Printing is not, there is no delimiter. When you are printing a string, it prints the string until the string is over. And how do we know a string is over? It hits null at the end. So it's only reading from the keyboard that the delimiter is white space character or we can modify it to something because it's not a string that is coming it's actually stream of information that is coming in and it has to find out where the data ends it's not a string it's not null termination it's actually the enter key that ends the fires up the data coming into our scan so if you see i'm talking gobbly gook spot stop me and answer answer the uh, let, uh, ask me to clarify. So if I say over here name, print the name, it's going to print the name, right? So let's just run this program and see what happens. So. Shouldn't there be a by your scan at the end of that block? Pardon me? At your scan app, shouldn't there be an S at the end? Uh, or no? In the scan app? Yeah, in the scan app. That squared brackets and then carrot, comma, close square bracket, that means S. But not with a not not but with a custom delimiter. Yeah. So essentially, when you put that one, you are saying it's a string, but read and stop at comma. So if you hit enter, it's not going to stop. So the enter is not going to work. It's going to hang, because enter it's going to still read the enter. It's going to read the backslash n. It's not going to stop at it. You are telling it to stop at comma and nothing but comma. Yes. I'll explain later. Something very bad. What I'll explain later. Okay? It will essentially hang because it doesn't make sense. But I'll tell you why. Okay? I'll tell you exactly wh what's going to happen. Okay? Give me two seconds. But if we put S, what happens over there? Something, it means, actually putting S afterwards means something. But not what you expect. I'll explain later. Okay? Keep that in mind. Keep your question and let's do so. So if so, if I run this program now, so this is the entry that I want to make, right? This is the entry. So if I run this program, let's actually read step by step. So I'm just going to run right down to here. All right. 
Oh, sorry, wrong one. So now it's actually asking me to enter something, right? It's not asking me because the scanf has, has not happened yet. But as soon as the scanf happens, it waits for me. So now it's actually waiting over here for me to enter. And now I'm going to actually enter the information. So far that, Saleh, yada, yada, everything's there. When I hit enter over here, see, nothing is passed. As you see, program is in wait mode now. So scanf is executing, waiting for the flush of information to come in. Information won't come in until the user hits the enter key, correct? By the way, this lecture is kind of covering parts of previous thing that I'm making a video for too, so previous week. So bear that in mind. So as soon as I hit enter, the scanf is over. So what happened with the scanf? If I take a look at name over here, you'll see Fred Soleil is red. Is there a comma in the string? No, that's what it is. That's what it reads. So essentially it reads F-R-E-D space S-O-L-E-Y. As soon as it gets to a comma, it halts. It stops. Okay? What happens to that comma? What happens to comma space 3 comma space 2.8 enter? What happens to that? Where is that? It's still in the buffer. Technically, good way of saying it, in kindergarten version, it is still in the keyboard. Okay? So it's still sitting in a keyboard waiting for another scanf to come in. Do I have another scanf over here? No. And because I'm in a controlled environment now, when this environment is over, it collapses the whole environment. And as a reason, all the stuff in the keyboard will be flushed. But if you run this as an executable separately just by itself, then you're going to have three things in the keyboard for any other program that comes after yours. Okay? But because you are running it in, a, in an IDE, in an integrated development environment, when it's over, it's as if you rebooted your computer. That's why memory leaks and problems with memory when you're running under Visual Studio doesn't crash your computer because it's in a controlled environment. But if you actually run a program that has memory leak after compiling it and closing Visual Studio separating by itself, then it's going to actually have problem for your OS. You're going to see after five times running it, something's going to happen to OS. Either you're going to get an error from OS saying that this thing is doing some hostile thing with, with memory, or your computer is going to crash. All right? <clears throat> so now if I print this thing, well, it's going to print exactly what we expected. And that's Fred Soleil, and the rest remains in memory. Are we OK with this? All right. So <clears throat> now, how can I get the rest of the information? OK. This thing, first of all, I can limit the amount of information that this thing is reading pr to prevent crash. OK? So what I can do, I can actually mention, well, how big is my uh, string over there? How many characters? How many characters? How many characters? 60. 60. There's no plus one. 60. That one is for the stop sign. It doesn't count. OK? So 60. So if I want this scan if not to go more than 60, so I'll do this. I can put a 60 beforehand. So I'm saying read and stop as soon as you get to comma or you read 60. So it doesn't crash my program. Of course, the rest of the stuff are going to be in trouble, but all right? Are we OK down to here? OK, so I'm going to remove that 60 just to not to have too many information, just letting you know that you can mention what is the width of the information that is coming in. And like that, you can actually limit the amount of information that is coming in. And now, another thing I want to do over here. Since it read right to comma, that comma is not important for me. It was just end of information. I need to read the next thing, right? I can tell to scanf, skip the comma by actually adding a comma in the format string of, this, of scanf. Now, is there any possibility for the next character of this reading not to be comma? Impossible, because it's supposed to read until it, it gets to a comma, right? So if it stops, it means the next one is comma. 
it can't be anything else, correct? Right? So that's what scanf does. When you put com over here, it reads the next character and checks to see if it's a match. If it's a match, it throws it in garbage and continues. If it doesn't get that one, it hangs. So now if instead of that comma over there, it's impossible. But if I put S over here, then what does it mean? It means read up to comma, stop, and the next character must be S. Is it possible? No, it read as soon as it sees there's a, the comma coming, it stops. Then you say the next character is S. It can't be. The next character is a comma. So you're essentially dooming your scanf to fail. What if the user does not enter any comma? What if the, huh? if the user does not enter a comma? It's just like if, yeah, so it's not, nothing. Hangs. Right. Scanf hangs. It just doesn't read. It just stops. It keeps waiting for the comma to come. It's going to keep reading and reading and reading. So essentially, if I do, wait, let me show you. I'm going to do this. I'm saying over here, Fred, and I hit enter, and I say, Soleil, and I hit enter, and they say, Manlu, and I put comma now, and I hit enter. <laughs> you see what happened? It even reads the, back, the, the new lines. And when it's printing it, because now new lines are within the string, when you print it, it actually goes to new line. So it's got to keep reading. It's, the scanf is not going to go away. It's just going to hang over there waiting for you. Da, 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 da. OK? All right. Yes? Uh, 99% of the answers to that is yes, but it's very difficult, okay? For printf, it's very simple. For printf, you put an asterisk, and it just gets the thing. But for scanf, you can't do that. For scanf, there is a way. There is a hack for it, I would say. Not the, it's not a standard C thing, but it's a hack. First of all, when, if, if a scanf doesn't work for you, write a function for it that gets character by character and does whatever you want to do. Okay? First, that's the first thing. Number two, if scanf does work for it, like if, if you know other features of C language good enough, you can find a way to Google it, and you'll see people come up with some weird answers. I'm going to say, like, they give you some kind of a solution, they go, wow, yeah, cool that it's possible, but it's not the way that I'm going to do it. Okay? So, here we have user interaction, right? So, actually, the the, uh, the user actually over there, if it doesn't enter a comma, it, it, it just keeps going, right? The user says, what the heck? The program hang. And as soon as they put the comma, it's going to go through. But anyways, let's put the rest of the stuff. So now that I have a space over uh, a comma, now I can actually put over here percent %d, right? Percent %d, how does it work? Percent %d says, that's how percent %d reading an integer works. First, it's going to skip any white space character that is there. As soon as it reads to something that it can read, it starts reading and trying and converting it to an integer. Up to the point that it can't read anymore. So in here, if I put 3 and comma, that comma will actually stop percent %d of reading further and passes 3 to it. So I put another comma, it means skip that comma, and then I'm going to read a double. Percent LF, and then scanf ends. So in here I'm going to say address of number of subjects, and address of GPA. Why didn't I, why didn't I put address of in front of the name? And because it's a string, it doesn't require because it's an array, and because it's an array, it's already a pointer. OK. OK, you all give me right answers, but I want the, 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 you know, I want the good answers. Because name is already an address. It's name of, a, name of an array, and as a result, it holds the address of the beginning of the array, so I don't need to put an ampersand. It is already an address. 
Okay, so in here I can't say name is this. And then number of subjects. And I'm going to put percent D and go to new line and then say GPA percent one LF. It means only one, uh, just give me a second, only one uh, uh, digits after the decimal point, And then I'm going to print the things that I read. Number of subjects. And GPA. Come on, you can do it. Okay. Yes, sir. Space before what? Give me, give me line number. The scanner. The scanner. Oh, just no. I just yeah. If I put a space. It does because it means skip a space. If there's no space, then it's going to fail. So it's my bad. I have to, I have to do like that. So it's better not to put this. Game. Because percent, percent, any number that you read, uh, integer, uh, float, double, any type of number, mathematical number that you read, by definition, it says if there is any space, skip it until you, can, you get to a readable character. So it's going to skip spaces anyway. You don't need to put that. Okay, by nature, that's how it works. So now if I actually enter this beautiful thing of mine, and I put that information over here and hit enter, what I will get is actually all the information read properly. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Now I could tell you, okay, one by one, start entering all this information and give them to me and... Uh, and I want to do something with it. I want to see what is the total, what is the average of the GPA of the class, and I want to know um, how many, what is the average of the number of subjects that the student took. Something like that, right? I want to do that math thingy. So then you have to do it one by one. You have to say, please enter this, and user says yes. Do you want to continue? So you keep doing it like this. It's going to take forever. Remember, user interaction is a very expensive thing. To talk with that dumb user sitting behind that keyboard is a very difficult thing. You would like to actually have all the information piled up somewhere, read it, and if it fails, you simply say, file is corrupted, fix it. You give the file back, they're going to go through it, and they're going to say, I read it down to this record, and after this it failed. The people who provided you with the file, they're going to go through and say, oh, yeah, there's a, there's a problem here. They fix it, they give it to you again. So you process it again. It's much easier like that. All right? So how do we do that? How do we actually read from a file? So this is what we talked about when we are reading from the keyboard. So student information from keyboard. So how do we actually read the information that is actually as a batch sitting in a, in a text file like this? So I have the students sitting over there. Homer Simpson got three subjects, and it, uh, the GPA is 3.4. Ned Flanders got four subjects and 4.0. Selma Bouvier got three, and it's three point something. And it keeps going like that. So I can get them one by one like that, correct? Are we OK with this? All right. So if that's the case, if I want to get all these information, how can I do that? The, the answer to you is absolutely no difference. The only difference is that you actually have to tell to the, to the program that your input is not keyboard anymore. It's the file. And you open the file and make it ready for the program to read it. The command is identical. No difference. How do we do that? To be able to handle, handle a file, actually get something from a file, You need lots of information. You need to know lots of information. I don't want to go through it. It's an OS thing. It needs to deal with your hard disk and see where the file is and, the, and then how to access it and so on and so forth. Because it's not like a piece of memory that, that your program is accessing and reading and writing into. It's an external thing. Because of that fact, a structure is created for it. 
and the structure is created with all the information that it's needed. And that structure is, is being converted to a type, and it's called a file. Okay? So essentially, you, you, what you need to do, you need to have the file opened, and that information passed to you as a handle for a file. If I want to, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So if I want to, if I want, <laughs> if I want to handle this bag, I cannot just take it from anywhere. I need its handle to be able to pick it up, right? That's exactly what you do. You specify what is your file, how does it work, it's for reading, for writing, where is it in the file, in a thing, and you return its handle back, okay? How do you do that? It's like this. So if I want to open a file, all these functions are standard input output, so you don't need to include anything new. So what I need to do, I need to say F open, file open. I need to open a file. And in that F open, I pass two strings. To that F open, I pass two strings. The first string tells where the file is and what is its name. You know how to do that, using path and a name. If the path is not someplace else, you just put the name. It means here. But if you put it in a subdirectory, then you have to put, it a, put the name of the directory and separate it, and you know how to do that. Okay? So what we don't care about that, we assume that for now, for, as our level, that our data files are right beside the executable, so I don't need to put it anywhere else. I don't need to specify a path. So the first thing I need to do, I need to mention what is the name of my, my data file. And as you see, it's data.txt. So I'm going to actually name this data.txt, OK? And then the second one is another string that can have up to three characters in them. Few characters in them. And each character actually specifies how you want to deal with the file. For now, we want to read from that file, right? Read starts with the letter R, so you put an R in there, and that's it. So you're going to say, open this for reading. And this thing, this function f open, returns a file structure. Okay? I need to grab it and hold its address somewhere. Where? In a file pointer. FPTR. So you essentially say FPTR is set to F open. This FPTR is the handle to that file. Anything you do to add FPTR happens to data.txt. That's the rule. Okay, FPTR is the handle of your file where you can do whatever you want. Now, in here you set scanf, right? Instead of scanf, say file scanf. And then in here, say FPTR. Whoa. And the rest is identical. You don't need to change anything. Done. Yes. As name name wise? Yeah. What do you think? It's a variable name. Okay. I could have put it hee haw over there, but the people wouldn't okay, FPTR is a file pointer, so it's kinda of cool. Okay, you can put anything. So I could put I could put data file. So, yeah, sure. Data file. Is that better? Yeah. Usually you put something that makes sense. FPTR is a general thing. Data file is better. Yes. Okay. Right, so you have like seven names. Uh, which name is scanning when you're doing? What do you think? You as a human being, when you start reading, which one are you going to read first? The first. One. And then when you read next, which one are you going to read? The second. And then when you read, which one are you going to read? We have only one. So it's going to only read the first one. If I told you only read one name, how many names are you going to read? Put the scan. So, so why not? 
the app scanner prints the whole file. Yeah, it reads from a file, not the entire file. Again, you are doing wishful thinking. Computer program is not an intelligent thing. You like to happen, you like to say file, and magically, poof, it reads the whole thing. Now, with your wishful thinking, where does it put it? Uh, in the right. no. How many arrays do you have? Uh, we have six, seven names over there. Which one of them are you going to put in that array? Either the first one which keeps reading to which is the last one. And okay. One I think you learned something about keeps doing something. What do you do when you want to keep doing something? Ta-da! You put that scanf in a loop and it reads them all. Huh? <laughs> Another copy <laughs> for that explanation. Thank you. Thank you. So scanf reads the very first one. Yeah, it's a... Again, don't, don't go wild. It's exactly a scanf, people. You've already done that. When you write one scanf, it reads the whole keyboard till the end of the universe. No, it just reads the first thing with an enter, right? Yeah. It's the same thing. You have one F scanf, it reads one record. That's it. All right. All right. So now if I run this program, of course, I did, I did something very bad. <laughs> very, very bad. That F open over there. It does something that you don't know how, but it does it. It actually creates a structure of type file that you see at seven. You see I, I wrote file over there. It's a structure, several things into it. So essentially, if you do like this, you'll see what I mean. So if I go data file and I do like this, you'll see placeholder. So there are things in there. I don't want to keep going, but it has... You can do stuff in that. There is stuff in there, but we don't want to go through it. But what I mean is that, that it's, it's, a, it's a structure with lots of stuff in it, OK? Now, it creates a nameless structure of type file on the fly that it doesn't have any name. It doesn't have any identity. But it passes its address out, and you keep that address in that data file. Because it creates, you don't know how, magically does that. Magic, okay? When it creates that thing on the fly, because it's creating it on the fly, and it's not a variable that you designed somewhere, that you uh, allocated some space for it, if you don't get rid of it, after your program is done, it stays in your memory. And you're going to have a file open even after your program ends. See? See, let me, let me tell you this. Each one of you over here, let's say, have a computer. Each computer is assigned to one of you guys, correct? Right? So when you go out, you take your computer with you. Hence, no computer is left in the room, correct? If I put a computer over here and I do not assign it to anyone, it doesn't belong to anyone, and the class is over, everybody's gone, one computer is going to stay in here, right? That's what happens. That F open creates a structure that doesn't have any handle. It doesn't belong to anyone. It's a kind of an orphan type of a thing. It doesn't have a name attached to it. Anything that has a name attached to it, like name, number of students, GPA, all these things are going to evaporate when their scope is over, right? But F open created that thing on the fly. Because of that, it doesn't have a scope. It belongs to everything and anything. You have its address. You know where it is using that data file pointer. So you can access it. But after it's done, after the program is over, it's going to just stay. Unless you tell to the standard input output file to close the file and throw it away. So you have to make sure always, 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 always you close a file that you open. OK? If you forget to close a file that you open, if you forget to close a file, you are leaving garbage in memory. So that's the very first experience of you with memory leak. If you don't do an F close at the end of the file, your program has a memory leak. Yes? Uh, if we create a, a function outside of name, will it have access to data files? If you pass the data file to it. 
if you have to pass through, it's data file over there is a pointer, right? It works like any other pointer. If you want to pass it to something else, create an argument as file pointer and pass it. Yes? It doesn't give you the error message back. Just like the, if you don't have the return zero. One more time? Uh, if you don't have the F close, uh, does it give you the error message? Like no, that's the thing. Because it's not aware of its existence. Remember, you did not create that. Programmer did not create that. Because of that, the C language is not aware of it. It's a function that created it on the fly. You'll understand what I'm, see, what I'm saying when you learn dynamic memory allocation next semester. But that's the best, expl best explanation that I can give you. The file structure created in F open does not have an owner. It doesn't have a name. It's a nameless thing that you have its address. As if I put a note computer over here, so whoever doesn't have a computer can use this one. So I give the address. So people come and use it, but when everybody's gone, if I don't close it and put it aside, it's going to stay here forever because it belongs to no one. It's the exact same thing over there. All right? Yes. Which one? Line seven? Good point. The answer, no. Why? Tell me. No, you tell me. No, 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 you have the knowledge for it. No, 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 no. Good, good try. No, but you know. See, these are the things that you should be able to guess correctly. What happens at line eight? I guess you're opening it, so you don't need to. No, no, I'm not opening it. Don't go into this just... Just look very on the surface, as if you don't know what the heck is going on. You don't know what is F open. You see, you created a variable called data file, correct? At line 8, what are you doing? So if you set it to null, you're going to wipe out that null with whatever that is coming in. Then why do I care if it's null in there? You know why they put null in it? Like any other pointer. When you have a pointer, to tag it that this pointer is not used. It's not pointing to anywhere. You put null in it. That's why they put null. So yeah, after you close it, if I want to use this data file to do something else with it, because it's a pointer, right? I can open another file into it after I close this one. It's just the handle, right? I can open another file at line 13, 14, and I'll keep going with that, right? Now, if I want to do something like that, and it's too many things I'm doing, I want to recognize that if this thing is actually pointing to an active file or it's closed or not, then I'm going to, as a good programmer, I would say, anytime I close a file, I'll make sure I set the data file to zero to make sure that if later I'm using it, OK? You follow what I'm saying? And another thing is, that, is this. When this standard is actually followed with the F open function. So if F open, let's say I, I put over here data file.txt and I don't have such a thing. What happens if it tries to open it, if it cannot open, guess what it returns? No. So right after this, I can do this. Right after this writing uh, this, I can say if data file is equal to null, then I'm going to say could not printf could not open data.txt. Okay? And in the else part of this one, I'm going to write the rest of the story. So I'm not even closing the file if it's not successfully opened. Okay? So I'm essentially saying if the data file is null, I could not open the file. Something went wrong. You forgot to put the file over there, whatever. So I tried to open the file, I couldn't. Now that I could, so this one is a good part, I can actually open it. No, I'll work with it, and then at, after, after, afterwards I'm going to close it and the program ends. Yes? I'm not sure my question is related to this. Because he integrated a pointer and then gave it a value. Mm -hmm. Usually the case was creating something like an integer or whatever. Yeah. Is it possible by the same token to create a pointer to an int and then giving it pointing it to three or, or something? No, you can't. No, you can't. Yes, it is. 
It is possible. You don't know how yet. And I'm afraid you're never going to learn it in C language. They're going to teach you how to do it in C++. Yes. Look for the command malloc. Malloc. Memory allocation. Okay, memory allocation. Mal ma M A L O C L L O C malloc. Okay, later, not now. Go Google it, find out about it as an extra thing. Yeah, then you'll see what I mean. Okay. Anyways. All right? You but only if you have extra time, because that I just opened the can of worms. It's not something you say, oh malloc, I know I understand. You actually you have to study for three weeks to understand how it works. Okay, so all right. So <laughs> It's not like, okay, I'm going to go. That's not the case. It's mem dynamic memory allocation is a very, very fragile uh, and dangerous thing. So this is what you mean, uh, what? Yes, it actually uses that. It actually uses dynamic memory allocation, yes. It has some kind of a malloc inside of open, and it creates a dynamic. So essentially, when you say double GPA, what did I say? I shouldn't have it. So when you say double GPA, you're actually say create a double variable and name it GPA. So your program is aware of existence of a double called GPA. And when the scope is over, it throws it away. OK? But if you knew, you could, if you needed, you could say, OK, I'm going to decide if I'm going to have a double halfway through my program. You are not capable to do that. For now, you have to foresee any variable that you want to see, you want to have. If you want a double, you have to put a double. If you want two doubles, you have to put two doubles. If you want three doubles, you have to put three doubles. You cannot say halfway through my program, I'm going to decide how many doubles I need, and I'm going to get it then. You can't do that. You can if you knew dynamic memory allocation. Which is that one? How many files I want to open? I don't know. What is the information in the file? I don't know. So I'm going to, but the function f open is written by a professional to do so, okay? I could have just said blindly, f magic, data file is a handle, f open is a handle, make sure you close the file before you go, all right? But I didn't tell you just for you to know when you get to the time, you know what's going on. Well, are we okay down to here? Okay, let's run this thing and see how it works first, all right? So now if I actually run this program, first of all, what's going to happen if I run this program? It's going to say, could not open the data. Why? Because I, I changed the name of the file, right? So now let's fix actually the file name that I want to open. And when I run the program, this please enter thing is moot. I don't need it. Because I don't need to, you know, I don't need to do that. Right? I don't need to put anything in there. I don't need a prompt. There is no user entering the information. Information is already in a file. It's being fed to the program. So if I do this, then pa, this is what I'm going to get. Right? And now what I can do, OK, who wants to answer this question? What scanf returns? What does scanf return? Kind of right. Who's going to correct what he said? He was right, but he just named it in a way that, OK. How does yeah, scanf work? What does it return? The same thing which he said. <laughs> what does scanf return? What does scanf return? Scanf. OK, scanf returns the number of successful reads. So if you have 3% signs in your, com in your format string, if it returns three, it means it read them all, read all three successfully. Yeah. So it may fail and return two, which because I have three over there, it's a failure for me. Because I wanted to read three, but I read two. So zero, it means it read nothing. Failure is minus one. Okay. Well, you know what is, if, what is failure for scanf? When it hits the end of the file. Okay, reading nothing is not failure. It just didn't read anything. But failure, it means I, I got to the end of the thing. And reading is like this. One, two, I have three steps to the wall, okay? I have three steps to the, fall, to the wall. How many steps I have to take to know there is a, there is a wall if I can't see? Four. Four, correct? So if I go one, two, three, they're all successful reads. 
I don't know I'm at the end of the data. I have to do, uh, oh, sorry, I am not. Now, it, that's the exact same thing. So what I can do over here is this. First, because I know I have seven, seven things in there, I'm going to do it like this. So in here, I'm going to say int i. And I'm going to say for i set to 0, i less than 7, and i plus plus, right? First, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do this. Are we OK? Yes. You don't want to close the file set. Yeah, I made a mistake. Thank you. I like that. OK. Right? Are we OK with this? I'm assuming that the scan is the second one. It's on the yeah, it goes to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. There's going to be a problem over here, I presume, but we'll see. Can I start? OK, so if I run this program now, this is what I'm going to get. Can anybody tell me why the output is as is? Do you see any problem with this output? Yeah, can somebody tell me why? No, you don't tell me. I know you know. <laughs> tell me what it is. Yeah, it's at the end of each line, there's a new line character, right? At the end of each line, there's a new line character, correct? So your thing says, stop at what? Comma, right? Because it says stop at comma, when it reads down to here, it reads up to new line, correct? So after it reads the first record, reaches to the last, there is a new line right at the end. That's where your percent s hits. And because new line is not uh, a delimiter in here, so it won't skip it. What it's going to do, it's going to actually read the new line and net Flanders and then stops at comma. So the second one has a backslash and attached right in front of it. Pardon me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could write uh, exactly the same thing that you're like a flush thingy that you have. You can write a flush keyboard thingy to read one by one from it. You've already done that, right? You, well, you, you had a thing that you go one by one. You could flush. Or let's try something else. Let's see if it works. What did I do? I said, after you read that thing, skip the backslash in. Right? But this is, because it's a file, I can do that. Of course, if somebody put a couple of spaces over there, then I'm doomed. It's going to hang. No, it's not, it's not safer. It's the provider of the data file's fault, not yours. You document. You're going to say it has to be comma-separated value ended with a new line. If they don't put a new line, too bad. They have to fix it. They're going to see, they're going to see hopefully you're going to put a row number with a 1, 2, 3. They're going to say, okay, seven records was read, or four records were read, and it stopped. So they're going to go on record four and look at the fifth one. They, ah, there's a new line over the shoe. It, like if we forgot to remove a spore, we had a space or some garbage over there. And so... That's the thing. When, when you are reading from a data file, you put strict information about how the data is supposed to go in a data file. And if they don't do it, then you have. But somebody may tell you, OK, I have corrupted data. Write a program that actually reads the data and fixes the data file. Then, yeah, you write a flush then. And you try to make the best out of the data as it comes out. And you keep a log of the information that was as garbage. So you don't throw away the garbage. Those things that you are flushing, you're actually keeping in another file. And you're going to say, the, these are the flushed information, the, the crappy stuff that you had in a file that I, that I filtered it and throw it away. And this, so depending on what you do. But that's a different story. 
All right? Are we okay down to here? Are we okay? Now let's say we want to actually have this information kept in a file in a format in a nice way so we can print it out later on. Okay? So the information that I'm showing on a screen, I want it nicely in a file formatted and, and save it in that one as an output file or a formatted file or ready to print file or printable file of the comma separated values that we have. Okay? We're going to do that after the break. I feel like one of those people in commercials. <laughs> We're going to do this after the break. <laughs> okay, I'm pausing it for all those people who want to have them. So, now as you see, I added a uh, few things over here. First of all, I created another file. I cre called it data file at, at, at line 8. And then I set data out to fopen output.txt, but instead of R, I put a W over there. It means it's for writing. And then, um, uh, in here, I'm putting data file is set to null. Now I'm going to add the second condition. So there are two things now. If this is null, if I put or, it's, I'm going to again open a can of worms. Why? Because then at the, okay, let's do it. So, or in here, I'm going to put data out is equal to null. You have to tell me what's wrong with that. There's a, I create the bug in here. So every now and then this program may crash. I'll we'll find out why. Okay? So data file. Um, not crash. It's going to create problem. You'll see. Um, so now it's if either of these guys I could not open uh, either input or output file. And go to new line. Now I'm saying f printf. I'm printing a title, uh, a title, row, full name, subs, yada yada. I'm printing the second line. I put dash and a plus underneath, like that, to kind of create an illusion of of rows. Then in here I'm putting three. So so in here I added this f printf. In three spaces I'm printing the row. Then I reset the things going up. And now what happened to the light? To light? I don't get a break. Seriously. How to, how to destroy double programmers. <laughs> okay. Uh, for those who are watching the video, we just the, the, the power just went off and my laptop is still working, so <laughs> it's still recording my voice. <laughs> okay. <laughs>